This is an electron diffraction tube. It has an electron gun, it produces a beam of electrons, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Just here, there is a thin sheet of graphite that the electrons will strike. And here is a screen that glows when an electron hits it. The makers of the tube have extracted as much air as possible from the tube in order that the electrons aren't absorbed. That does make it a bit fragile. I'm going to make some connections to the tube now. So, first of all, I'm going to make sure everything is turned off and turned down. I'm going to connect a low voltage outlet here to the heating element of the tube. When you heat a metal, you can boil off electrons. This is an EHT, extra high tension voltage supply. It's one of its principal uses is with electron tubes. It has a built-in supply for the heating elements. Note that although the EHT supply is used in school can be up to 5,000 volts, they are currently limited to 2 to 5 milliamps. This means you can't get a, a fatal shock from them. You don't need to use shrouded leads. This is not true with the HD supplies used in some electron tubes. With them, you absolutely must use these shrouded leads and anything you plug into must have shrouded sockets. I'm going to earth the negative terminal now. And connect it to the heated filament of the tube. We can call this the cathode now, since it's the negative terminal. Next, I'm going to connect the anode via a milliameter. The milliameter, and an analogue one is best, is used to keep an eye on the current. Above 0.2 milliamps, the electron beam could severely damage the graphite. So, we now have a cathode and a cylindrical anode. The electrons are boiled off at the cathode and attracted to the anode because this is positive. However, because the anode is cylindrical, electrons are going to pass through as a beam. In short, the beam of electrons is produced in exactly the same way as that in an old-style cathode ray tube monitor, or TV. I'm going to switch on now and allow it to heat up. I believe some of you of a certain age will remember having to do this with your televisions. Now we're going to turn up the voltage, keeping an eye on the current. Okay, so there's the beam. Now, still keeping an eye on the current, I'm going to turn it up further. And there we have a diffraction pattern. This is produced because the electrons have a wave-like behaviour. They are diffracted by the thin sheet of graphite, which acts like a diffraction grating. Instantly, you could be forgiven for thinking that the two distinct rings here represent first and second order maxima. But in fact, the graphite acts as though it has two distinct spacings. I'll leave it to you to research that one if you want to know how this comes about. I'll also leave it to you to work out why we have two rings rather than a set of fringes or a 2D array of dots. Now, watch what happens as I turn the voltage up further. The ring diameter is decreasing. For any students watching, have a think. Why does this happen? Here are two simpler questions to help you. What happens to the speed and therefore the momentum of the electrons as the voltage is increased? What effect does this have on their de Broglie wavelength? The rest is over to you.